Peeker's advantage in FPS games is where the guy turning the corner sees you before you see him. This is because of the inherent desync when playing multiplayer games. You live hundreds of miles away from the other guy. Of course it's not gonna be one to one. Greetings, I, the War Owl greets you. What you see is what you get, if you look close enough. So let's see what we're really getting. I want to show you what Peeker's Advantage looks like inside of Counter-Strike 2 servers compared to Global Offensive 64 tick and 128 tick servers, so I devised an experiment to show just that. What I found will shock you. Well, now you have to watch. First, I needed to make the test. I designed a map where players would stand equidistant from a perfect angle. Even though it's mathematically impossible to make an isosceles right triangle with whole number sides, this was so that perspective would not influence the test. I even put markers so I knew where to stand and where to aim. If you want to learn more about perspective, check out my perspective video. I made an identical map in both Global Offensive and Counter-Strike 2, and goodness gracious, I love the Hammer 2 editor. Then I set up the servers. For you networking nerds, I used an Amazon EC2 Z1D.large and use the exact same server with the same IP for each of the tests, even across games. They're running on Ubuntu. There should be no routing differences. I wanted to test the difference between the net code of the games, the tick rate of the servers, compared to the ping differential between the players on the server. Because of this, I used a VPN to simulate higher pings when necessary. This would have been a great video to do a VPN sponsorship. But I'm not good at business. I'm not a mathematical, scientifical guy. I like to see and experience things in order to understand them. So how do we see the peeker's advantage? What do we use to sync up the screen captures between the two players? Sometimes high-tech problems require a low-tech solution. I put two monitors next to each other and then recorded it with a video camera. First, we look at two players with identical low pings. This is our best case scenario beyond playing on LAN. This is what peeker's advantage looks like. You can kind of tell there's a delay, but it's almost one-to-one. -one. Movement desync on the CS2 server, the CSGO 64 tick server, and the CSGO 128 tick server were virtually identical, consisting of three frames for moving, shooting, whatever. The camera is recording at 60 frames per second, so three frames is 50 milliseconds. To simplify it, let's say a Counter-Strike player's reaction time is 200 milliseconds, so the peaker's advantage in a best-case scenario is about a four of a Counter-Strike player's reaction time, I don't think that's bad at all. I actually think that's pretty good. Counter-Strike is a well-made game, and I didn't initially see a difference between the two games, Global Offensive and CS2, but as I gradually increased the ping of one of the players, I started to see something interesting. The computer on the right was always kept at low ping and was always playing as the T-sided player, so we're gonna call him low ping. For the computer on the left, I used a VPN to send him on a world tour. First to Chi Town, where we got 45 ping, then to Denver, where we got 90 ping, then London at 165 ping, and finally, as an over-the-top example, to Sydney, Australia, with a whopping 370 ping. Those numbers are double what they should be because I'm using a VPN. I'm sending the packet a across the world and then it has to come back again. There and back again, a packet's tail. The Chicago player is probably the most real world scenario. You have a player who's really low ping at like 15, playing against a player at like 45 ping. That range is what you're gonna see in the wild. And you can visually see what the peaker's advantage looks like. To me, it didn't look bad at all on either CS2 or Global Offensive. The Denver player is where it gets a little bit goofy at around 100 ping. It's at this point, I'd say the peaker's advantage is enough to where you want to be the guy who peaks first in any engagement. The London player was completely unacceptable. Just look at it. This is not the point where the game is unplayable. You can still play at these pings, but it's not gonna be fun for anybody involved. And as we'll learn in a little bit, it'll be not fun in CS2, a big time for nobody. Something really weird happened when your ping got above 200 the server started printing out this logging, and you had to start leading the target by whatever the peaker's advantage was. I think this is so that if you have really high ping, you don't ruin the game for everybody else, but it also makes the game completely unplayable after 200 ping. What? I can't do it. What is this? I can't do it! Once I actually started doing some tests and recording some numbers, we begin to see a tale of two games, but not of two tick rates. I didn't see a functional difference between the 64 tick and 128 tick global offensive servers, so from here on out, we're just talking about Counter-Strike 2 
and Global Offensive. The first thing that was very obvious is that Global Offensive looked much crisper visually. Check out CS2. If you just saw this, you'd think the player missed, but the player did not miss. In my opinion, this is the main problem with CS2. It's technically a great game, but the visuals don't line up with what's going on, and it, it ends up feeling kind of goofy. But Peeker's advantage. Here's the big reveal. Here's the thing I found. Watch closely now, friends. When the low ping player shoots the high ping player in the face, it takes 100 milliseconds to register. But when the high ping player kills the low ping player, it takes 50 milliseconds to register. But that's a different number. That's not what happens in Counter-Strike 2. Doing the same test gives us a 100 millisecond peeker's advantage every time, no matter who peeks. This means that in Global Offensive, the lower your ping is compared to the other guy, the bigger advantage you're gonna have. But in Counter-Strike 2, you don't get an advantage by having lower ping. The desync is always going to be the worst case scenario. Ignore my haircut. This video took me like two weeks to make. I'm going a little bit insane. In Counter-Strike 2, if you have 15 ping, you're playing the game, you're living your life, and some guy joins the server who has 150 ping, every time you interact with that guy in the game, you shoot, you run away from him, you do stuff, it'll feel like you have 150 ping. This makes something like running behind cover, dying and getting teleported back, feel worse inside of Counter-Strike 2 than it does in Global Offensive. Here's what it looks like in Global Offensive. You run behind cover, you die, and you're instantly teleported back to where you died. See how they do a little fade to black thing so you don't notice that it happened. In Counter-Strike 2, the same thing happens, but if the guy who got you is a high ping player, it's worse by a few tens of milliseconds. I think if they added back the fade to black, people wouldn't even notice and they'd stop whining about it. After playing Counter-Strike 2 for the last few months, I think many of the complaints about the game are completely overblown. If people are complaining about Peeker's advantage or dying behind cover, I'm pretty sure there's something else going on there, maybe server quality, because it's the same server with CSGO, the game runs fine and is very comparable. Do you disagree with my findings? Well, I invite you to prove me wrong, because what I care about is the truth of what's actually happening, because I want Counter-Strike 2 to be the best game it could possibly be but I'm gonna need a little bit more than it feels bad because you can't see feelings and what you see is what you get. Thank you both very much for watching. I'm The War Owl and I still have no closer.